Mm -hmm. You know, I, I look at corporate media and you said uh, you've been at CNN and uh, Fox, which people, if you've never seen it, Outfox is one of the best documentaries ever. As a, as a former Fox exile myself, uh, I, yep. I, it spoke to me. What, yep. what I see, particularly now, obviously in 2016, it was a mix of blacking out Bernie and obviously uh, trying to sabotage his campaign. But it looks to me like corporate media is doing like day trading, you know? First, it was Kamala Harris. They gave her, CNN gives her a town hall five minutes after her rally, basically, to announce her candidacy. She doesn't quite take off. Then they tried Bed Beto for a little bit, standing on bars and this and that. Then they were relieved because Biden came in, and that's probably who they prefer, these multi-billion dollar parent companies. And then Biden, you know, every, every event was saying something else to put his foot in his mouth. And then Harris, most of these presidential debates, I'd like to get what you think, are more like scripted, scripted um, plays where they're just looking for like a, a, a zinger or this and that to go on a loop for an, a, a, a de the next day. Uh, it seems like they're just switching from candidate to candidate, anybody but Bernie. And it also seems like uh, Politico had this piece, all well, the establishments willing to compromise, quote unquote, on Warren uh, rather than deal with Bernie. It's, it's like corporate media is day trading between candidates. Yeah. Norman Solomon wrote a column on that exact theme how the big money is going to shift around. You know, they thought Beto, Biden, now they're going to be back to Harris. Frankly, if they end up in Warren, it's going to be because they can't stop her. You know, I, I really think mainstream media is anyone but Bernie, but also anyone but Bernie and Warren. Hmm. I don't think Warren can be changed on these issues that have motivated her uh, for the last 30 years. Now, obviously, they find her perhaps less troublesome than Bernie a little bit. But I think it's uh, in the elite circles. It's anyone but Bernie and Warren. And that's why I'm hoping there can be some form of an alliance. I mean, we've come down to uh, basically a top tier of four candidates, two uh, corporate liberals or what I call liberal corporatists. That's the language I want people to take out of our movie, The Corporate Coup d'Etat. Because, you know, I, I got active in the late 60s and we were, and remember, it was the Democrats that prosecuted the Vietnam War up till 1969, and we called them uh, corporate liberals, establishment liberals. I flip it now. I call these people liberal corporatists. They're liberal on guns. They're liberal on gays. They're liberal on abortion. But on the big issues that the power brokers care about and that swing voters vote on, which is inequality, corporate power. They're really corporatists. And so we've got two liberal corporatists in the race, Biden and Harris in the top tier. And then you got Bernie and Warren on the other side. But I mean, when you bring up corporate media. And, you know, it's so funny when I hear even Clintonites attacking right wing media. One thing they don't want to hear about is how important Bill Clinton was in building the right wing media. And you know that I'm an expert on this. I've talked about it. I was fighting it at the time was the Telecommunications Act of 1996. And at the time, and this is Bill Clinton and Al Gore, the, the Democratic White House working hand in glove with the Republican Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, with a bill that was written by media conglomerates for media conglomerates and they shove it through uh, Congress. Clinton signs it in February 1996. The mainstream media wouldn't cover it. Groups like FAIR were fighting this thing because it, it, it allowed big conglomerates to get even bigger, even fatter. And uh, CNN wouldn't cover it. And when a consumer group tried to buy a 30 second ad attacking the telecommunications bill that the Democrat Clinton and Republican Gingrich were pushing, CNN wouldn't even sell them the time. Mm. They wouldn't sell them the spot. So as a result of that, what's happened? What, what happened right after 1996? Well, there was this television company called the Sinclair Broadcast Group. The law prior to Clinton's Telecommunications Act was a TV station a company could only own 12 stations. 
immediately Sinclair Broadcast Group jumped to 50, and now they're almost at 200 stations. And they're a Trumpite, and they have these must-run segments, just Trump propaganda at their 200 stations. Same thing with Clear Channel. Before the 1996 Clinton-Gingrich Telecommunications Act, Clear Channel had about 40 radio stations, a right-wing company based in Texas, allied with the Bush family. And then right after, within a year, they've got a thousand radio stations. What do they do with those stations? After 9-11, they circulate that sheet, 150 songs that shouldn't be played on any of the Clear Channel stations. Um, you know, it was like anti-war songs from Bruce Springsteen and Imagine, John Lennon, all rage against the machine songs. Then Clear Channel's using the public's airwaves, their radio stations, to organize pro-war rallies with the Iraq invasion. You could look at Cumulus. Uh, prior to the Telecommunications Act, uh, they owned a few dozen stations. Then they went to 90. Now they own several hundred. And it's, uh, again, right wing. When, it, when the lead singer of the Dixie Chicks right. in 2003 makes a harmless joke about President Bush. What does Cumulus do and Clear Channel? They won't run Dixie Chicks music. Uh, Clear Channel used a radio station in Louisiana to organize a rally. They were bo both Cumulus and Clear Channel were organizing pro-Iraq invasion rallies. Uh, but in Louisiana, they organized one where people bring their Dixie Chicks CDs and tapes and a 15 ton tractor is destroying them on a baseball field while people in the audience cheer and uh, people in the stands are cheering. That's like the whiff, the hint of fascism was coming years before Trump. And again, it was largely because of right wing media that the corporate liberals of their day, Bill Clinton and, and Al Gore uh, helped push through. I mean, they were the leading forces along with Speaker Gingrich and the money at that time. This is before Citizens United. But you could give soft money, big donations to Democratic and Republican Party committees. And the money was just flooding in to uh, both the Democrats and the Republicans. And like a corporatist, Bill Clinton didn't think, hmm, in three years, six years, by me bloating the Murdoch empire and bloating Sinclair and bloating Clear Channel and Cumulus, this right wing media is gonna be pounding away at Democrats. He's a corporatist. He thinks the next three months, you know, the next quarter, the next two quarters, and he did get reelected, but the country's gone to shit and the corporate media has gotten uh, concentrated in fewer and fewer hands. And some of them are just right wing propaganda and, and we can thank Bill Clinton. So when I would hear Hillary Clinton like yelling about Fox News and, and right wing talk radio and how unfair to her, well, she could just thank her husband. And that's what, what I can't stand is when I come across liberal activists today who buy this that Biden or Harris are more electable than Warren or Bernie because they heard it from the mainstream media and they don't understand how, betr how betraying of liberal and progressive values corporate Democrats have been in the recent decades. They just don't know the history. Right. And looking at the election now, I mean, it's, it's to me just brazen. Biden's first event was with a Comcast lobbyist. Comcast yes. owns NBC. AT&T owns CNN. Uh, they've given Kamala Harris $53,000 so far. That's just for the first quarter. The, the second quarter numbers aren't out there. Technically, it's individuals working for AT&T, but the secret there is it's not exactly the janitors giving the money. Uh, you have on panels, lobbyists on panels, no disclosure. You have uh, talks during you know, the Iran war mania of last two weeks. You basically have former generals that are actively tied to security uh, industry or defense contractors, no disclosure. You want to talk about a corporate coup d'etat, the corporations have seized our news and information. No doubt. Completely right. And, you know, when I introduced the New York premiere of the corporate coup d'etat movie documentary at the Left Forum, 
I said, for those of you who watch MSNBC over and over, well, you're going to be disappointed because our movie focuses on U.S. oligarchs and not Russian oligarchs. And what's fascinating about uh, the Democratic Party is they really are allied with the Comcast company. It's not just that MSNBC is the sort of the voice of corporate uh, liberal corporatism. It's that the owners have always been very close with Obama. I mean, Obama once joked uh, in Philadelphia where Comcast is their national headquarters. He was at the vice president of Comcast mansion is the chief lobbyist, Mr. Cohen. And, uh, and uh, Obama says at one of the fundraisers at the Comcast mansion, he says, the only thing I haven't done here is have a Passover Seder. <laughs> and, um, you know, he's been golfing with uh, the head of Comcast. You will never hear on CNN, MSNBC, very little also in the New York Times or the Washington Post, who are the U.S. oligarchs that are destroying democracy. You will hear about Russian oligarchs who were connected to someone who was connected to someone who had no real power in the Trump campaign anyhow. I mean, you have these triple bank shot conspiracy theories on MSNBC, CNN linking to a Russian oligarch. And, you know, Rachel Maddow can be uh, spewing about how important it is. And she's uncovered something serious. She will never talk about the oligarchs who are her employers, Comcast, who played a role in the 1996 Telecommunications Act and are now working hand in hand, corporations are bipartisan, they're now working hand in hand, and you mentioned AT&T, with Trump's Federal Communications Commission to try to end net neutrality. So uh, these corporations that work hand in glove with the corporate elite of the Democratic Party and the whole Republican Party, those are the oligarchs you need to learn about. I know you teach it because you do real journalism. Uh, Amy Goodman does it on Democracy Now!, Common Dreams, Truth Out, Truth Dig. There is a boom in independent journalism. It's what I taught for 10 years at Ithaca College. But that boom in independent journalism will really be curtailed if we end net neutrality, funny thing. You don't hear about it on MSNBC and CNN. That's more important freedom of the press issue than Trump, as nasty as he is, calling reporters enemies of the people, and that is dangerous as hell, but nothing's more dangerous than if Trump succeeds in ending net neutrality, something he's worked for since day one, and Steve Bannon and the others we're pushing him and he's working with the owners of the media, whether right wing media or or liberal corporatist media. That's who Trump's working with hand in glove to try to end net neutrality. And that'll render independent journalism, truthful journalism that tries to figure out who holds power in the society, who's screwed in this society. What are the economic trends in this society. You won't hear that in Russia, 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 CNN or MSNBC, because they're part of that, that, you know, that liberal wing of the corporate media or the corporate liberal wing of the corporate media that President Clinton did so much to create. And uh, real quick, I know the film uh, has been playing in uh, Europe. Uh, what is the what is the uh, future? Are we going to see it here in America? How could people get it? If people, the, the, people can find it online, just the trailer, corporate coup, the corporate coup d'etat. We're asking people to go to their independent theaters and tell them about the movie. We hope to be in independent theaters for the next few months, and then I'll be touring with this movie for a year. So people want to contact me. You know, my website is jeffcohen.org. Um, but I, uh, I will personally take this movie. You mentioned Europe. We've shown in public... Uh, TV networks already in Europe, we will never be seen in public TV in the United States. And it's a movie about the United States. Yeah, that's it's always amazing to me. Sometimes yeah. I see RT America doing more actual right. domestic 
reporting than CNN. Right. Uh, well, we're, yeah, we're on mainstream uh, public TV. We're on public TV in France and Germany, but we're not in the U.S. And right there is uh, exactly what the corporate coup d'etat is about, closing yeah. down true information. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll keep in touch. Thanks, Jordan. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as 5 to $10 a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Thank you.